सर अनदर मंकर वॉज कैप्चर द माई कंपनीज सक्सेस की नंबर ये दिल मांगे मोर द चीज गाइज वर सो हाईली चार्ज ऑफ दैट दे आर वॉन्टिंग दैट सम मोर मंकर शुड है मोर चार्ज As we celebrate this very special day of triumph and victory, students of our Bolton School had the opportunity to interview the real-time heroes of our country. Let's give our ears to this very enriching interaction on the saga of commitment for the well-being of our nation. Colonel K. D. Sagan hails from a family of professional soldiers. Both his grandfather and father had participated in the World War One and Two, respectively. Upon joining the army in 1963, Colonel K. D. Sagan has participated in 1965 and 1971 Indo-Pak wars and also Operation Pavan in Sri Lanka. He has been awarded for bravery during the war. Both his sons are serving offices in the ranks of brigadier and colonel. His eldest grandson is presently under military training and would be a commissioned officer next year. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Harshita from Grade 10A, and I study at Bolton School, Secunderabad. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you, sir. Please permit me to ask you this question: What made you choose a career in the armed forces, knowing fully well the dangers involved? Did you ever regret your decision? No. On the contrary, I loved this career. Seeing my grandfather going for the first world war, my father going to the second world war. Thereafter, I took up. and fought all the wars of the last centuries and just about 20 years when the left of the last century my son took over the eldest son he is a brigadier and then when he was also there my younger son also joined him and so it is there in the Grand. blood Grand. that we uh, fought and the dangers of course the definition of the danger is when you go close to it there is no danger so we had the danger but the dangers can be anywhere on the road side when you are crossing the road the truck may hit you or you go in the night you don't go because there is a danger there is a danger in the night but when you join the armed forces they ask you to exercise during night only pitch dark that you go and you find that there is no danger Yeah. and as far as i regret i never regretted this in fact i pray to god if i am born reborn i should be again putting on the uniform and subsequently i <clears throat> sometime ask my friends or my students that i'll request the government to allow me to put on uniform for 2 hours so that i can go back and fight again Good morning sir I am Marine Rat of grade 7 I am studying in Bolton School Secunderabad Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak to you My question to you is Sir is it the training the passion or the love for the country which makes a soldier fearless and courageous during war Let me answer this question to you there's a combination of all the three it cannot be in the separate compartment that here it is the training and here it is a passion no i'll ask you a question here how did you feel are feeling the moment you heard about the china building up against us your parents you your friends you all feel very agitated what is it it is the love for the country that you have every citizen every citizen was Uh, pent up with the fury that let them come and we'll see them this is what is the 
passion or the motivation to join the armed forces. But the most important thing is the training. When you are trained through thick and thin walls, the climates, the mountainous regions, the gorges, the thick jungles, when you are trained into those, then you get to know, well, this is the part of the life. This is the part that you must exhibit your courage and fight at that time. Can you share with us a few experiences of your wartime adventure? Uh, let me think, yes. In 65 war, I was a lieutenant and going. It was a dawn attack early in the morning, 4.30 or quarter to 5. Commanding officer suddenly told me with whom I was walking. He says, I can't hear the complication from the left company commander. Can you go and see why he is not responding on the intercom? So I went and saw that he's been hit by a bullet and he's fallen. So I asked him, Khanna, what happened? He says, sir, I am dying. I said, don't be silly. Nobody is dying. Doctors are coming. And he did not die. Subsequently became all right. I saw his men were demoralized and sitting. I asked them, get up and follow me. I will lead you. So they were hesitant. I said, get up. I am standing and you are sitting. Bullets are flying. Come, follow me. And so they followed. followed. And thereafter, they said, Bol Kali Mai Ki Jai. And then we ran, hiding, sitting, getting up, dashing. And then finally, we reached at the Ishogil Canal. That was our objective, and we captured it. Uh, the second, uh, <clears throat> as far as the danger is involved, yes. Uh, uh, it was the 71 operation. We were uh, advancing, and we captured the uh, locality and then we were searching in the search operation we entered a hall and we saw a few injured enemy lying and one amongst them was completely alive and he was posing as dead so as we entered in the dark I saw that he immediately trying to get up and shoot at us if he had few seconds more he would have shot but I also spontaneously had my string done in my hand, I hit him before he could even align the rifle on his head and he collapsed. Thereafter he was arrested by the soldiers and made as a prisoner. Many other incidents are there. So there are many such occasions which you remember and you feel happy that you served. How can we as youngsters who are stuck in the web of gadgets, technology and games, realize the importance of patriotism? A very pertinent question that you asked. And I'll give you an example of my personal house. I have four grandsons. The eldest, he's already in the NDA and very soon he'll be commissioned officer. They're all the same generation, I think. And he will serve the nation. Then the next three, are competing into neck-to-neck -neck race with each other yeah. that who joins the armed forces first. Yes. So, here also uh, the equal responsibility is of the parents as well as the teachers. The best example is of your institute which has called me as a veteran. That's why I'm giving you these things. From the horse's mouth you're hearing this thing. The motivation will come the moment you hear me. It's the parents' duty also to ex give you the exposure, the maximum. Take them for the picnics, excursions, outdoor activities, yes. or take them to the you know the football game of football and the game of cricket outside, so that exposure increases and your motivation starts for the armed forces as such. Oh, and. and Join NCC, join Scouts, join NSS. That will also give you the adequate opportunity to get out of this rut of uh, remain in the outdoor, indoors only. Do you think a few years of military training 
should be made compulsory in India too, like in some other countries. It's a noble idea, a very good idea, but on the ground it is not very practical. Lot many expenses are required to prepare an army. Crores and crores of money uh, is spent to prepare the officers as well as the Jawans to prepare them for the war. So yes, during emergency, if you have joined the NCC, you join the uh, uh, scouts and you are trained immediately in emergency, these can be conscripted and they are a ready force to join the uh, mainstream of armed forces. There are few countries, those who are constantly threatened, so they have a conscription like a country, uh, Israel, or the North Korea, or the South, South Korea, or Mexico, they have certain countries where they are having a conscription because they are threatened. We in a democracy, if we need 100, 10,000 will be standing there ready to join the armed forces. Sir, as we all know, Kargil is not just another war fought. It is history, a tale every Indian citizen should be proud of. Can you tell us a few things that every soldier should endure at such high altitudes? It's interesting for you to note that I have been fortunate to serve at Sikkim Heights as well as at the Leh and Ladakh Heights, including Kargil. But my son is more fortunate that he volunteered to go to Siachen Glacier and serve there also. The hazards which a soldier has to face is the uh, height sickness, uh, then uh, rarefied air, the amount of air that he needs, it's not there. Everything. Even the helicopters which they come, they cannot lift with the uh, load more than two to three people, a small helicopter, because the air is so rarefied. But then army is the one, Indian army is the one which trains you very well and prepares you acclimatize you and then send you to these heights oh, and then comes the uh, hazards of avalanches and uh, <coughs> crevasses which are covered otherwise maybe about 100 feet down uh, uh, and then the equipment which uh, is given a special equipment and the special clothing which is very very costly that's a, and <clears throat> a soldier has to put on. Now the, uh, the charm of these places is that once you uh, return from this thing, you are given a medal that you have served in Siachen. You are given a medal that you have been in the Kargil, uh, you see the Sikkim, high, high, high altitude. And, and the best adventure of life, which we always seek for, is, are these places the best and soldiers. best soldiers that we produce. Even the China has acknowledged that the Indian warriors, the Indian soldiers are the best uh, high altitude warriors. warriors in the world. Thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time for our interview. Thank you very much.